G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another Construct 2 tutorial video series. This time we're going to make our own Pong game. And for this particular series, I'm going to focus on a couple of things. I'm focusing on objects and how to create them, setting up your projects, behaviours, and then a tiny bit of scripting at the end. And the very last video, I'm actually going to set up some challenges for you if you want to try them out and try and push yourself with Construct 2. But for the moment, this video, we're going to focus on just setting up your project from scratch, adding in some objects, and creating some sprites. That's pretty much all we're going to do. And then the next video, we're going to start doing some behaviors and things like that. So for the moment, let's create ourselves a brand new project. I want you to click new project there, click on em new empty project, click on open. Now, what I quickly want to do is explain this interface in a bit more detail compared to the last video. So first of all, what you have in front of you is layout one. Think of layouts as your levels. Think of projects as your game. Okay. So your game is a project and each layout you have is a different level inside your game. What I want to show you is how to navigate this little screen here, this layout one. Currently we have nothing on it. So if I press play, so run layout, that's it. It's a white space. I can't do anything. There's nothing on it. It's because it's a blank project. But realistically, I want to explain this gray dotted line here. Okay, versus this white space all around it. Now, to navigate this bad boy first, you can do a couple of things. I can use the scroll wheel to scroll up and down in my layout. Okay. And to go left and right, if you've got a left and right scroll wheel, you can do that. Uh, and back. But it takes a while. So the easiest thing for you to do is two ways to pan around your layout. And panning is moving left and right and up and down at the same time. If you've got a scroll wheel on your mouse, I want you to click it in and hold it, and you just move the mouse. And that's the first way to pan your layout. Second way, if you don't have a scroll wheel, is the space key. It's just to hold space and move around your layout. Okay, so this entire white space is the size of your level. There's nothing on it. It's good to go. Okay. And then finally, the last couple of things I want to show you is zooming. So there's a couple of ways to zoom. First way, if we go to the view tab, we've got the zoom keys right here. Zoom in, zoom out, set to 100%. The other way you can do it is holding control on the keyboard. Either control will work, and then scrolling backwards and forwards. And the last way to zoom in and out, if you ever need to do this, but I'd suggest get used to the scroll wheel if you've got one, Control zero, set your zoom to 100%. Control minus, control plus. That's just next to the backspace key. Okay, I'll just set it back to 100%. And let me explain this gray dotted line. This here is how big your window size is. And your window size is what you see when you play the game. So when I play the game, when I press play, I'm not seeing all of this white Okay, I'm only seeing what's in this grey dotted line. And that's really handy. If you've got top-down games where you move around and the camera follows you, then this window will actually move around your layout. And the same sort of thing if you have a platformer, then you'd have a really long layout. Okay, and then your camera would move across. But we're making a Pong game, so there's no such thing as a camera moving. So what I'm going to do is I'm first of all going to set up my window size, and then I'm going to set up my layout size. So first things first, let's click on New Project on the top right Project pane here. And I want you to name your project. First thing you should always do, call it Pong. You can set an author, email, and website if you really feel like it and have one. And the second thing is we're going to set up the window size. Okay. The reason I'm going to change the window size is not because this is a bad size, but it's because it's set up for widescreen monitors. You can see 854 by 480. So it means it's 854 pixels across the window and 480 down the window to that dotted line there. Okay, what that actually means is that that's all I'm going to be able to see. And if you have a standard monitor, like a 4x3 old CRT or whatever, you actually, it might get cut off on the side a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the plus button so I can see the width and the height individually. And I'm going to change the 854 to 640. Because that's a pretty common number. And you can see the window size is now a little bit more, I suppose, shrunken down. And it's going to fit in a lot, a lot of screens a lot better, including tablets. So anyway, that's just that set up. The next thing I want to set up is the layout. So let's click on the layout up here in the top right and set the name at the very least. This is my first level, so I'm going to call it level one. Second thing is the layout size. Same thing, like 
we're never going to utilize any of this white space. So what is the point of us having it? So I'm going to reduce the layout size to match the window size. And that's and you're going to do this for games where you don't have cameras moving around your layout or the layout doesn't need to move itself. So I'm going to set the width to the same number, 640, and the height to the same number, which was 480. All right. Now the one thing to note, whoopsie doodle, 480. I did it again. Oh my God. Click. The one thing to note about this gray space is you won't ever see any of that kind of stuff. Okay, you're only going to see the white space. It's around here. If anything's in the gray, you'll never see it. All right, that's our level and our game or our project set up and ready to go. The next thing is we need to start filling it with some graphics, objects, and things like that. There are three ways you can add objects to your game. The first way you can add an object is by right-clicking on the folder object types and clicking on insert new object. Second way, right-click on the layout, insert new object. Okay, pretty straightforward. The third way is by double clicking on your layout and it brings up the insert new object already. That's actually probably the easiest way. It's just double clicking on your layout and you've got insert new layout. Now your objects make up your game, okay? There are a lot of things that you can choose from and a lot of things you can use. Now, probably the easiest ones to recognize and understand is the okay, like buttons, okay? You've got text boxes, you've got sprites. Sprites are basically images and they're the building blocks for your game, okay? And you've got Different things down here, like game pads, you can add in keyboards, mice, touch controls, okay? All these things add features to your game. And what I suggest, if you'd like to know more about them, is just single click on the object and read the description down the bottom. If you, that doesn't make sense, click more help. It'll take you to the official Skira website tutorial, and it's going to explain a few more things for you. Now, let's say I know what I want. I want a sprite, because we're going to make the left-hand paddle to start with. If you know what you want, just going to click cancel. I double click on the layout again. I'm just going to type in sprite and straight away you can see it's selected sprite for me. I am then going to type in the name of my sprite. Please name your objects really well because if you don't name them, if you leave them as sprite 1, sprite 2, sprite 3, sprite 4, it's going to be an, it's going to be absolute hell when you get to your event sheets and you're trying to track what is what. Okay, especially if you've got the same colored objects. So, for sprite, I'm going to name this guy left paddle okay please capitalize capital L capital P good grammar always helps now one quick little error I'm gonna get if I click insert it says invalid characters were removed from the object name click insert again to confirm this name you can see it's taken the space out that's because you're not allowed spaces in names of objects all right it's just the way things are now you can see why I capitalize things because it's now got a capital L and a capital P and I can easily distinguish the two words now realistically <clears throat> basically this is what you call camel capitalizing capitalizing each word with no spaces that's done okay I'm done describing this let's click insert and I'm gonna get a little X and you can see it says layer zero so the X means I'm inserting a sprite or an object for that matter and layer zero is the layer that I am inserting it into so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna left click and it brings up the image edit dialog. And it's basically like a little version of paint. I would never ever recommend trying to do good graphic editing inside this. This is for quick and nasty things. Okay. But the good thing about this image editor is it allows you to control animations and different animation frames. That's where the importance comes in for the image editor. Not for drawing things, but for setting up these animations, animation frames. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to click on the good old fill tool. Just left click, brings up the color palette. You're going to click on a color that you want. And I'm going to start with like a dark green. And it's going to click in the middle of the box. This box is your whole image. Okay. Click, done. Now to confirm this change, all you do is you click the close. Don't click the save button. What that's doing is that's going to save this sprite into a separate file. If you just click the X, it automatically updates. Now you can see that doesn't look anything like a paddle doesn't look anything at all like a paddle. Now, I've just added a sprite into my game. We're going to change this so it does look like a paddle. But before we do, there are three things you can do with sprites and objects that are on your level. First thing you can do is move them. And you do that by clicking and dragging with the left mouse key. Okay, it's as simple as that. The other way you can move it is by changing the position manually by typing in the numbers just up here. Okay, 
If you're the kind of person that likes to get everything just right, you might want to use them. Now, the size I can change by either typing in the numbers over here, or I can simply grab one of these anchor points and just move it around like so. So the one thing I want to note to you quickly is that if you use the corner anchor points, it's going to resize it horizontally and vertically. If I just use the top and the bottom ones, it's just going to do vertical. Left and right is a horizontal size. The third thing we can do is rotate this bad boy. Again, we can change the angle here, or we can grab this inside square here, turn him around. Whee! All right, I'm going to undo those. Undo, undo. And we're back to normal. Let's set a decent size. And we'll move him over to the left-hand side because he's a left paddle. All right, left paddle is ready to go. Now let's quickly redo this. Let's create another object. So I'm going to double-click, sprite, right paddle. I'm going to choose red, which is up here. Bloop. Do the same thing to resize him and put him in the right spot. Okay, apologies, I did go pretty quickly with that, but what I want to quickly show you, it's pretty hard to try and get the right size. I could even put him over the top of the green one and try and get the right size, and I might be a little bit off. No, I am a bit off, actually. So what actually you can do is have a look at the size values for the green or the left panel, so 32, 122, and simply put them in there. So 32, 32, comma, 122. And now they are the exact same size. There's no advantage or disadvantage. Put them on the right-hand side, and we're almost done. Let's make ourselves a ball. Okay, so same thing. We're going to double-click and make a sprite. Doop, boop, call him ball. Click insert. Press in the middle. And we're pretty much good to go. However, this time, this is actually a little bit too large for my liking, because a ball's not going to look that good if you just fill it in with black. Okay, it'll be a square ball then. And I don't want that. So what we're going to do, let's erase that. I'm actually going to use the paint brush tool for this one. And before we do, we need to change a few settings. The size, we need to set to the size of our picture. Now, you may not know what I'm talking about there. But down the bottom is the size of our image. 250 by 250. 250 across, 250 up and down. Okay. My ball or my paintbrush is currently set to 100. Okay, so what I'm going to do is change it to 250, and you can see it's the perfect size. The hardness is how well, how hard this, the um, paintbrush is going to be. If I set that to 50, you can see it's got a bit of a haze. If I set that to 10, you can see there's a bigger haze around my paintbrush. So hardness of 100 gives you a perfectly round ball, and you can try this with the smooth on or off. It's entirely up to you. There won't be much difference. Click. Okay. And then close. Like always, let's set a decent size. A little bit smaller, I think. And there we go. So, our sprites have been made. We're ready to go. All we have to do now is add a bit of behavior to our objects, add a bit of scripting, and we're pretty much done. So, we're going to start that in the next video. Thank you for watching this one, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.